<laughs> um, I started filming this video randomly, but essentially I'm creating another zine. So for this zine, I'm kind of tapping into a style that I've never really messed with before. And I don't know, it's kind of dark and weird and cartoony at the same time. But I thought I would talk to you guys a little bit more about what my process is going into these pieces and how I'm kind of finishing them digitally. That way you guys can kind of see how I work and things like that. So I have a couple of sketches here. I just went right in with a pen and just kind of like brain dumped and that's kind of the way I'm working through these pieces. Um, and if it doesn't work the first time, I just try again. So this is like attempt number one, attempt number two. And if I mess up on things, I can just kind of edit them digitally. So like little tweaks like this, I can always correct. For this one, I like tried to do it, obviously that's, what is that, right? So then I sketched it really quick and then I did it just with pen. Um, yeah. Yeah, so basically all of these pieces consist of a figure, not all of them will necessarily have that, but a figure and then like some text with a weird thought that might not make sense and kind of connects with the picture, but kind of makes you think a little bit, but not that much. Cause it's really just like, I'm brain dumping, you know what I mean? So it's not that big of a deal. <clears throat> So right now I have one, two, three, four pages done. And if you know a zine, there should be eight drawings in it um, or eight like little folded squares. Do I have a, yeah. So it will fold out like this. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, I lied. I actually have five drawings done so far and I have I don't have ideas for the other three. I have ideas for one more. So that's the one we're gonna do together. And then, I don't know, I'll film clips of the other two, but this is will be the one that we collaborate on. Not really, but I'm gonna walk you through it. So the piece that I wanna do next for the zine is about my birthday. I want to do a piece about my birthday because I turned 17 on June 17th. So it was my golden birthday, um, but it was one of the weirdest birthdays I've ever had in my entire life. I don't know why it was weird. I didn't really do anything. The only thing that I did was get Vietnamese food with my family. But yeah, I had, I was in a weird um, mood. I had a lot of weird thoughts about turning 17 on the 17th. I'm gonna do this piece to talk about that and let out the way I feel about that, so. Oh my god, I didn't know that was in here either. Look at that. Okay, so I did some visual brainstorming. Can't see that. 17 on the 17th, we covered that. I'm kind of struggling with this sketch. I just have like a table with a chair with 17 balloons and a card and the birthday cake and things like that. This is kind of like the first thing that came to mind. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna go with this. Okay, so I thought I did a better job recording this, but turns out I only got clips of me frosting the cake. So that's all you're gonna see, but I kept the process really simple. I just did single line inking for most of it. And then on the chair and the 17 balloons, I just did some messy cross hatching just to give it a little bit of texture. And yeah, I kept it pretty simple. So that's about it. Okay, so it is the next day, but I did the finished sketch. I think it looks kind of cool right now. I like some of the texture, like especially in here that's in this balloon. Um, I think the birthday cake turned out okay, but like the other ones, I take them digitally and fix them up a little bit. Yeah, I'll check back. Okay, so taking my drawings digitally is where they really come to life. So I just brought the scan of my artwork into Photoshop and then since it's just black and white ink drawing, I'm able to use multiply layers just to add some depth and bring some things forward and push other things back. Um, I'm also using some dissolve layers to add a little bit of texture, but just by adding flat layers of grayscale, I can kind of bring some elements like the birthday cake out and then push other things back like the shadows on the table, just to give a little bit more life to the drawing and make things pop a little bit more. So that is all I had to do to finish up that piece. After I did that, I was pretty happy with it. And here's just some clips of me working through some of the other pieces. Um, like I said, there were eight total, so it was a total of eight ink drawings and then eight digital renderings of those ink sketches. So these were some of the last pieces I had to do before the zine was finished up, just the cover and one other page. but. 
the process is pretty much the same as the one as I described before. I tried to keep things pretty consistent that way when I brought all of the pieces together in the end there would be a consistent flow and I wouldn't have to worry about anything sticking out or feeling out of place and that's about it. Okay so another day has gone by but last night I finished my zine actually so all of the pieces are in their final form and I have a mock-up of what I want the zine to look like however I do not have a color printer to test it so I do have to go to my town library to make a little test print so I'm gonna do that right now. So I thought the printer at the library worked decently well to show you guys how it turned out, but it didn't. So it cut off the sides of all of the images and then like the bottom of some of them. So it doesn't like match up correctly and a lot of them got cut off. I'm gonna place an order at Staples and get these printed. I'm really tired, now I'm upset. My Staples order is ready, so I'm gonna go pick it up. Hopefully it's right or else I'm gonna be really upset. Okay, so here's what it looks like. The print actually turned out pretty good. It said it was matte, but it's a little bit glossy actually, but I actually, I kind of like that. And the paper's a little bit thick, but I think it'll still fold. So I'm just gonna go home, cut them, and then fold them up. Okay, so voiceover is back. So this is a pretty simple part of the process. I just had to trim off the white edges from the paper. But here I quickly realized that the paper that I had printed on was way too thick, so I had a lot of trouble trying to fold it down. It kind of creased and some of the ink actually chipped off uh, from the surface of the paper, which is kind of a bummer. And in the end, when I tried to put it together, it was super thick, so I'll talk a little bit more about that, but yeah. Okay, so this is the way that the zine turned out. This is about an 80 pound paper. I would recommend doing something around like a 50. Um, 28 is like standard computer paper, so that's kind of right in the middle. I think it's a good quality paper. It's just too thick for this project, but it's kind of the best it's gonna get right now. Just so you can see it. Like this is how all of the prints look. Okay, so overall, I'd say I'm pretty happy with the way that this turned out. I just know for next time when I print them to get a different paperweight, but I am happy with the way all of the pieces look. I think they look really unified. Obviously they're all really different, but they all kind of have a similar style that I was able to keep pretty consistent. So I'm happy with it as a little project that was, I guess, pretty successful. But overall, this was a really fun project. I would recommend making a zine for anybody that's never made one before. It's a lot of fun because a lot of art that you make isn't really interactive, but having something that you can really hold and play with a little more, I think is a fun way to mix things up a little bit. So if you enjoyed this video, you can give it a thumbs up, you can subscribe, whatever you wanna do. But yeah, thank you so much for watching, and that's it. I'm gonna say goodbye now. <laughs>